Hello and welcome to, uh, I guess, a recap of week four and five, I think. Uh, yeah, I've been pretty busy uh, working on this. I've finished up a rough idea of what the legs should look like. Um, not super set on the design still, but I'm going to refine it once I'm actually uh, manufacturing it, which I've been trying to avoid because making stuff adds a whole lot of time to the actual uh, process. So I'm going to try and do all the design work now and then focus on the iterations and getting it to actually work uh, later down the line. So why don't we go check out what I've been working on. So here we've got my pretty close to finished robot leg. Uh, so as you can see, all of the joints are pretty, pretty much done. I think last time I only had the like calf part and the uh, quad part, which I've modified a little bit, hopefully made them work, but here's what I've added in addition. So we've got the ankle movement uh, right here, and then we've got the foot side to side. Um, I'm pretty happy with the foot. Uh, on the bottom, I'm going to be using a piece of cork for grip, which a lot of, for some reason, a lot of robots use, uh, uh, for some reason, a lot of robots end up using like a hard plastic or metal even for their foot, which is just dumb. I mean, I wouldn't wear metal shoes. Why should my robot? Uh, and then we move up to the top. The hip is pretty complicated. Um, I think my robotic hip is going to be better than other ones that I've seen at least, hopefully. Uh, so of course we've got the quad part to kind of do the kicking motion. And then we also have uh, this axis for when I make my robot do the splits, which I'm making it uh, able to do that just for, you know, depending on what I'm doing, I want it to have the most flexibility as possible. And then we've got another cool part, which is to make the whole leg rotate back and forth. Well, not back and forth, but I mean, you know, rotate down its, its long axis. Um, this is important for balance and for like any any special kicking motions that I want it to have. I think this will improve that. Um, but that was a pain in the butt to do because basically before I make any part that involves a bearing that's a different size, I've got to remake the bearing parameters and then print it out a bunch of times to check it. Um, I'm going to stop doing that now because I think I've figured out the settings for how to change it. But uh, if we switch over to this camera, so now I've got a larger bearing similar to the one that I've shown in that photo that will now fit over top. And the reason why I sized it up is because I wanted a lot more, uh, it to be able to take a lot more side to side torque without messing up, which these ones are a little bit small, so it'll be easier for them to bend. Um, by bend, I mean like this way, it's less strong, where if you have a wider size, it's less apt to move that way, um, which I guess kind of moves to the rest of it, which I've finally kind of assembled it into more of a robot shape which is, you know, both legs. And the, the biggest challenge here was figuring out how far to space them apart. I ended up kind of going for as close together as possible while still being able to um, kind of have that motion of like tightrope walking where your legs cross over one another. Um, so we've done that. And here's where we get to like the interesting part that kind of makes mine a little bit novel is that it's going to be using a very large diameter bearing on the outside for the core motion. So then, um, I don't know if any of you guys work out, but like doing a Russian twist type movement where you're moving your entire upper body in relation to your lower body. I wanted my robot to be able to do that, but all of the other mechanisms that other robots used seemed kind of weak. So my idea was just to put a very large bearing there and uh, kind of hope for the best. Um, I haven't figured out much of the mounting for that. I'm still working on the design but basically it's going to be two of these large outer diameter bearings. It's like 134 centimeter or 134 millimeter. So like 15 centimeters almost. Um, two of them stacked on top of each other for extra strength. And then I'm going to have another servo motor with some sort of gear connected to it to be able to rotate that so I can have a lot of force and it will be really strong. Hopefully the only, the only kind of downside or, interesting factor is that the whole robot's going to kind of look like a power lifter now 
just because it has this big gut. Um, but I think that'll just make it more distinctive and interesting looking. Another aspect that I'm working on is um, packaging. So here are the different, or some of the different electrical components. Like these are the servo drivers that I just made some models of. So then I can start figuring out where I can put things in this torso and make it fit. So these are both the servo drivers. This is the voltage converter. And then here is the battery, which is batteries a little bit overkill for my robot, but I want to have a lot of range. So why not? Uh, also, if I ever decide to make it more combat robot, with like some sort of spinning weapon. Bigger battery is better. Um, I don't know how well all of this will fit, but that's uh, future Cooper's problem. Thankfully I do have all that space because of the large uh, bearing. Uh, now I'm just gonna quickly show you guys a little uh, vi video of it all moving so you can kind of get a better idea of what I mean when I was talking about all the different uh, axis that the robot leg will work on. Uh, but I guess uh, that's that's kind of it. Um, yeah, I'll I'll be <laughs> I'll see you guys next week or the week after with some more updates. Hopefully, uh, I've got gotten farther.